this is Mari Robson of Love Lulu Creative, a podcast that supports and celebrates artists and creative entrepreneurs while giving back to the community in a unique and meaningful way. And I am so excited because one of the ways that we give back is through a couple of scholarships and they are coming up soon. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to announce who those recipients are here in the next month or two. And that's super exciting for the next generation of artists. But we're also giving back to the community and to you by sharing all of these great interviews with these different types of artists and creative entrepreneurs. And they're just sharing everything on how they are becoming successful or already are successful. They're sharing their resources, their advice. So if you know anybody who is interested in pursuing a creative career, please share this with them. It would be deeply appreciated. And if you're enjoying these episodes, if you subscribe to the channel, that also really helps to get the word out and get the mission out that we really want these artists to be creating and and bringing their gifts out into the world and that you can do that and be successful. Uh, Today's episode number 14 can't believe it already. It's already episode number 14. And it's a really special one. It's my first interview with a jewelry designer. And she happens to be a very good friend of mine. Her name is Cindy Arnett of Sienna Grace Jewelry. And we actually met years ago in my boutique over her jewelry. And it's kind of an interesting story that we share. But what I really wanted to dive into with Cindy was how she was getting her jewelry into all of these swag bags at the Emmys and the Oscars and the MTV Movie Awards. So that's a very interesting way to market yourself as a jewelry designer. She also has her jewelry um, with stylists in Hollywood. So you may see some of her work in on television. Uh, she's had it shown on The Vampire Diaries, A Law and Order, uh, Mom, Pretty Little Liar. So it's a very interesting uh, episode, especially if you're, you're thinking of pursuing a craft like jewelry design. Here's a really wonderful way to learn about how you can market yourself in a very niche way. We also talk a little bit about selling online and what platforms that have been working and what have been shifting and changing in that arena. So very, very helpful. And I'm really grateful to be able to share with you one of my favorite people. Please stay tuned for a fun episode with the lovely Cindy Arnett. Miss Cindy, I'm so happy we're finally able to sit here and talk. And I'm so excited to talk about all your beautiful creations and get going on that. Well, thank you, Mari. It's kind of a surreal moment. I feel like I'm going full circle. <laughs> That's true, huh? Mm-hmm. Very so, much so. We, um, we're talking now, but we actually just had three hours of <laughs> catch-up time before. Very necessary. Very, very, very good. Very uh, purging to, yes. to go through yes. this. Um, so you're my first jewelry designer that I'm having on the show, and um, one of my absolute favorites. So I think it's it's a uh, very fitting that you're the first person that I'm having here. Oh, I'm honored. Thank you. <laughs> and um, also, what's really meaningful is that you actually met my sister Louise. So yes, a very special lady. I I was very honored and very happy that I got to meet her. Yeah. Definitely. So we were um, in San Francisco with my sister Louise, and the podcast is is based on um, in memory of my sister and uh, Lulu. And I got lost in the airport up there <laughs> at the San Francisco airport. Yes, that was a, a good memory. And I was yeah. so happy to be with you, yes, former, got out of that former one. flight attendant, <laughs> who also was equally lost with me. <laughs> yes. But um. That was a good time up in San Francisco. Those were the days. So anyway, but we'll go back to the beginning of our journey because I used to have a little boutique in the village and you walked in one day and I remember looking at at you and everything that was going on and you had this gorgeous necklace on and I couldn't believe what it was and I asked you all about it and you told me the story. The days of the pottery shards, the Ming pottery shards. Love. um, That definitely was the beginning of the creative journey and walking into your shop and you saying, how would you like to do a trunk show? And I'm like, a what? (laughs) I think I said, can you make 30 of those in a month? (laughs) Yeah, I said, a trunk show. Well, first of all, uh, yes, I'd be honored, but 30 pieces in a month? Oh, yeah, that's a piece a day. Sure, no problem. (laughs) Yeah, well, I did do that and uh, it it, it did work out. Yeah. It did work out, but... uh, I know you had a great night that night. I did have a it great was, night. It was the beginning. It was. 
Yeah, and those are really beautiful, those the Ming Shard necklaces. I think I have two of them, and I just, I really still think they're gorgeous. <laughs> well, thank you. I mean, thank do you look you. back at your earlier work and think like, oh, like I look back at things that I did years ago, and I'm like, oh, goodness, like that's, I, I've improved on that so much. Yeah, I do, but I think everything's a process. So it was the beginning, the beginning of the walk, and I'm um, still walking. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, you have to start somewhere, and that definitely with encouragement and you telling me not to give up and just to keep on going. I, I, I'm still here. <laughs> you know, I know. And that was later. How, is, it, is that how long you've been, been doing about it? Since 2006. Yeah, because that's when I yeah. opened my shop back then. Yeah. So wow, I can't believe it's been that long. <laughs> oh, know. my gosh. Jeez. That is, that's crazy. Well, um, you've, had, you've had a lot of... Um, I've watched you kind of evolve with your with your jewelry, but I there's obviously, like with every artist that I know, even... Um, painting artists, there's always a theme that kind of goes through. So you can always kind of recognize somebody's work when it's going through it. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I'm laughing because sometimes I think that, you know, I, I, sometimes I wake up, I think, oh, I want to do that. I want to make it, I want to look like that. I want to do something different. And then you always find out that you, you come back to what you know is to be true is like you have a certain a certain style and certain colors you gravitate towards and, mm -hmm. you and know, it just comes out that and way it just it, yeah. it just comes out that way and I'll, I'll make something and then it looks like something that I have no idea where it came from and I tear it apart and it ends up looking like something that ah oh, that looks more like me that looks like something I would do I feel the same way I mean that's why I think about 10 years ago I picked up watercolors because I'm such a control person and, and painting and acrylics that are very fine line and I wanted to get out of the box and push myself in a medium that was hard to control. Watercolor kind of has its own movement. And I still found myself trying to control it. still comes back to looking like, because it's coming from you. So right. definitely, yeah. definitely. So we've been this creative entrepreneurs together for, for quite some time. And um, we had talked like at that point I had a shop and I, I think I still had opened my online shop too, but we were talking um, about where you should be selling your work and you, was the first thing you did get into Etsy? Was that the first time? I think that was the first place that I went back when Etsy really did celebrate the handmade designer. They've so had that was changes like, lately. But. Yeah, so let's talk about that because okay. I feel like when I got on Etsy, I did it for a minute and it was such a struggle because I think at that point there was such a sea of uh, creatives on there that you just felt lost unless you did the treasuries and you kind of knew how to do keywords and like there was like its own. It, it definitely has its own it, it, its own persona. Um, it has changed a lot since then. There's been um, a little less from the handmade side of it to more the business model has changed on Etsy. Um, I don't want to get too much into that, but. The handmade designers are still there, um, and some. Why are there? Are you saying that there's people who are making like selling mass produced? There, there's a lot of. They did not used to allow that. Right, I didn't um, know that. A lot of things from China. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that, but it it has doesn't necessarily have its place in what is known by lots of people as a handmade um, unique site. A lot of people will come to Etsy for that different sort mm -hmm. of. Uh, things that they don't necessarily find in store and not mass produced and it's kind of gotten away from that actually it's really gotten away from that hmm. so the business model definitely has changed yeah and the the fees seem to be like getting a little bit more fees are a little crazy yeah <laughs> um and that's something that you know causes a lot of artists uh, myself included to branch out into you know other areas i have my own website now uh, I don't believe in putting all your eggs in one basket mm -hmm. because, you know, Etsy the will, algorithm will change. Algorithm <laughs> will change or they could just decide one day, hey, we're just we're just done. We're taking the money and running and we're all our stockholders are just cashing out. So, yeah, a little intimidating to to have to just rely on one source of income like that. But it still it still provides a lot of, of revenue for me. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's still OK. Yeah. So your business is called Sienna Grace Jewelry. Right. And so where did the name Sienna Grace come from? Oh, goodness. <laughs> I used to have a Sienna van, and I was sitting in my van one day driving up the coast and huh. thought, oh, I love the name Sienna. If I had a little girl, I would have named her Sienna. Luckily, I was blessed with you know, two boys. Uh -huh. But I would love the name Sienna. And then I thought, oh, that's a good name for a business, but I just can't be Sienna. So I thought, oh, what else could I add to that? 
So then I thought, I love the name Grace, and I also thought that without God's grace, I wouldn't be here now. Oh. So I put the two together, and that's how the name evolved. Cindy, I did not you know did that. that. I thought I shared that with you. I didn't know that. Yes. I, that's it. It's so interesting, because <laughs> it is interesting how people come up with a yeah. name for their business. It's so far know. away from my name, Cindy. <laughs> but it worked. <laughs> yeah, no, and it fits. It's, it's really a pretty oh, name. That's thank so, you. That's so fun. I thank love you. that. So, okay, so you're not doing Etsy. Well, you still have Etsy, I still but have you Etsy. just don't drive traffic no, there. No, anything I drive would be to my own website. Mm-hmm. And uh, Etsy seems to still, you know, still recognize me, but you do get lost in a sea of a lot of different jewelry designers and mass-produced goods, but it, it's still okay. It still works. Yeah, I also kind of got concerned, and I guess this is, this is an old concern because now everything is everywhere, but it did seem like there was people getting knocked off there and oh yes um, that that was like you know here's all this original handmade stuff and let's there's a perfect market to go look at and knock off right you know right. so that's that's a little bit of unfortunate yeah but that's just the way it's a wild wild west right now right, right. on the web so survival of the fittest <laughs> yeah um okay so you now is it with shopify that your website's with you? i yes i have a website i um was lucky enough to have someone help me build on Shopify, and I love the look of it. It's really pretty. Um, thank you. Yeah, I couldn't figure out that it was Shopify. It was. It's really nice. <laughs> yeah, she it did looks it. very she custom. Me. Thank you. Yes, yeah. we. She was very careful in helping me select the right the right fonts and the right colors, and she did a really nice job. Kind of. How does Shopify work? Do they uh, charge a fee, or do they? They do charge a fee, but they on do, per sale, or do, is it like a monthly fee? Um, it is a monthly fee and a percentage of the sale, but it's still much much more reasonable than Etsy is. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't cost anything to list on there. You can list as much as you want, and only when you make the sale. Do they take their fees out of? Which again is is I believe it's reasonable for mm-hmm. what you get. Mm-hmm. And I've been I've had my shot with Big Cartel for a really long time, and I've always really liked their format. Although I'm getting ready to revamp and change and everything. Something new maybe. And I <laughs> like the way yours looked. It was really Thank it's you. really pretty. Um, okay, so you've had all this celebrity success. <laughs> So we got to talk about the celebrities, the Vampire Diaries, the, like, oh my gosh, there's so many. Well, I've been very fortunate. I, um, I always wondered how, how artists get their items into the uh, swag bags at the Emmys or the um, yeah. Oscars, and I just was curious, and I looked online and found a couple different groups, but one that I looked at a little closely was a group called the Artisan Group, and it's a juried um Juried acceptance, so I was a little uncomfortable with that, being judged on, on my on my art. But one night I thought, oh, what the heck, let's go ahead and, and submit the, the application. And after I hit the send button, I thought, oh my gosh, what have I done? <laughs> but I waited a couple days and was lucky enough to be accepted. Um, it's a wonderful group. So is it a big group? I mean, do you know people in the group? Is it I a- do know people, um, some that I've met in person, some just online, because it's a very supportive group of, of artists of all different kinds of genres, be it jewelry or candles, um, artwork, you know, pet collars, crocheted items, mm-hmm. candles. Um, it's just a good group of women who definitely support each other and everyone wants to see everyone be successful. Uh, the uh, owner of the company is very, uh, very good at keeping us all, you know, excited about different opportunities. And uh, she's built a really nice, nice business about supporting, especially the, you know, the handmade community. So how does that work? Like they, they'll be like, oh, we're, the Emmys are coming up and we want you to submit. Well, the, we think you know, your item would be great for well, it's not so much that. It's that you look at what opportunities are out there, and there are plenty. There's, you know, there's big events like the Oscars and um, the Cannes Film Festival, things mm-hmm. like that. Or there's these smaller but very exciting ones uh, that we submit our pieces to a stylist. We get a uh, information that what the stylist is looking for, be it, you know, the the type of jewelry, the colors, the genre. And you come up with something that you think would be a good fit for your brand, and you you pay a very nominal fee to submit in a big collaborative gift bag, and uh, Valerie submits it, and you wait patiently to see if one of your items is selected, 
And if they are, if it is, then you are very happy. <laughs> so are and you doing this all for free though? It's like you're submitting this to. Well, there is a there is a fee to submit. Um, oh, and, and you have it, to pay. And you have well, it's it's very nominal. I mean, if you consider what it would cost to to be a part of a of a gift bag for the Emmys, it's in the thousands and thousands of dollars. But when you do it as a collaborative gift bag, we each pay a small fee. And then a, a large portion, a large gift bag is submitted, and you're just a part of it. And it uh, it, it can be very lucrative as far as the payback, um, especially if you're seen on TV on the popular shows. So, okay, there's a couple. It sounds like you do gift bags for, like, the shows, like they get the swag bags. Which, how lucky are these people? They're very lucky. free stuff. Well, it is. <laughs> That's it's... been like curated and perfectly yes. picked for them. Yes. And then there's submitting to the stylists of these different television programs or... Right. Or, okay. Right. So um, the, the, pay, the, the swag bag, like you could get picked and you have to make like a hundred of them. Yeah. Well, in order to submit, let's say there's different levels of participation. So there's something for everyone's budget. Um, but yes, you, I believe the, the minimal one for the, let's say the Oscars would be to do a hundred pieces that go into the, the bags. And then you, if you pay to have your item on display when they have the, uh, gifting suites where the stars will come through first and they'll, they'll see what's out there that you have and, and you'll be able to have a picture taken with the stars, not you personally, but your item. Yeah. And uh, it can be very good for marketing. It's and it's part of my advertising budget for the uh, when I do submit to the shows. Um, just calculate that into your budget for the year and see what your budget can so handle. That's a, this is a really great tip. Yeah. So like um, marketing wise, this is a great tip for all artists. And what, right. what you're saying, like if you have a greeting card line or you have um, art prints or things that you you are are making as an independent entrepreneur, that's that's another great marketing tool right to submit to these kind of groups right okay but it's wonderful because the support that you get from the other artists there they're very very um happy when when you're selected or or other people i mean it's just very good to see that support where you don't see the jealousies you just see people happy genuinely happy that you yeah know, your, your stuff made it <laughs> that's the greatest thing yes. why not i mean there's enough for everybody there's plenty to go around so how do you go about like the movie star then having a picture of your necklace in people magazine like how did that how do you even know about that happening i actually saw from um the vampire diaries i had a piece that was selected by the stylist and i was sitting around on a friday night just um having a cup of tea and looking at i think it was um people or us weekly i can't remember right now and flipping through the magazine and, and you saw and i saw like oh my gosh oh my gosh that looks like my necklace and it was you're and kidding no, but no. didn't you so the person that you work with from the artisan group they didn't say hey by the way no I, don't think she, I had to tell her you know there's so many opportunities and so many different ways that you can get exposure i don't think she, she, she didn't even know that it was in there either so i told her she's obviously very happy and very supportive and the picture sits right in my on my desk right now so Definitely. Uh, That's really, I mean, wow, talk about serendipity. Yeah, like, you just definitely. happen to, like, I don't even have a magazine like that, but, you know, I wouldn't even. That's, that's crazy that your energy <laughs> dream yes. to, to have a people magazine. Only get the magazine to see, you know, what, what current trends are out oh, there. Okay, and things okay. like that. Yeah. The Hollywood crowd, you know. Interesting. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. So, do you feel like you have to compromise your style? to fit the need of a stylist. So like Vampire Diaries, let's just talk about them for a second. Like they're gonna have a certain look that um, they're gonna be looking for, or do you only submit to things where you feel like, I think my work is a good fit for this? I do that now. I, you know, when I first started out, you know, you're compelled to want to try everything because it's exciting, you know, uh -huh. and especially if it's a star that you, you know, you admire or you like, you know, like the work. So um, I have, definitely narrowed my my choices down to things that I think are a, a good fit for me that you know follow more of my style I mean you know as, as an artist you can pretty much you know especially with jewelry you can throw anything together let's say but if uh -huh. it doesn't really fit your mm -hmm. your style then you're really not being true to yourself and yeah you have to be true to yourself because it, I think it comes through in your work you can authenticity see it. Mm -hmm, definitely very much so, <laughs> especially when you're like scrolling through a feed on like Instagram and you can see who is really kind of 
came up with this idea right. and, and who's copying this idea, right. which I would think happens a lot in jewelry. I mean, it happens a lot in art, but um, it's probably a little harder to... Well, and it's true. I mean, you know, trends are trends. I mean, you know, you... Well, there's that. Colors will come out, or yeah. it, it has, if it's a trend towards, you know, chunkier jewelry or more geometric. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's still able, you are able to convey your style, I think, through trends, but it is, it is, it is hard to uh, sometimes stay true to yourself, but I think in the long run, it, it's probably the better way to go. So we had an interesting conversation before um, I put the mic on, <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, yes. no, we have to talk about that yeah. on the podcast, because I think every artist struggles with this, and um, that's being creatively blocked, and oh, like yes. having that time, and, and both you and I have gone through some um, challenging times right now with family situations and things. Um, that are just life that you know people are going to go through times in life that are going to be challenging and for an artist it can be uh difficult to be creating when you feel kind of maybe depleted in a certain area of your life very true so um i thought it was funny because you were saying that you you feel like that you're creatively blocked and i'm like what artist hasn't ever felt that very (laughs) true Very true. Sometimes it can be, uh, you know, give you the ability to to put more passion into it because you can express yourself through your art. But other times it's like, I don't want, I can't deal with it. I can't think straight. I don't want to deal with it. But for the most part, I find myself gravitating towards, it's kind of like, that's like my therapy sometimes is to put Absolutely. out the pretty sparkly things and yeah. come up with something that, uh, that I'm proud of and I think that's interesting you say therapy because I do feel like, you know, when I'm going through something difficult, like creative journaling or my art is, is kind of puts me back on the flow, kind of resets me. And it grounds you a little bit. And it grounds you. It's, it's your happy place. It's kind of where you feel like you can just really let go and just create and tap into that. Um, but you know, I think that the downtime is just as important as the uptime. Oh, definitely. So it's like when you're working out, like you're working out really, really hard, but the recovery is just as important as when you're pushing really hard. Right. So like for art, I, I don't know where we came up with this creative block saying, but I call it like the simmering point. Like sometimes things just need to simmer and I don't have to be like totally producing, producing, producing. Um, because uh, social media needs to see this many posts, this many days. It's like sometimes it's okay to just be quiet. And I think as a real artist, you have to have that moment of stillness to to really be able to create again. That's a very good point. Yeah, I, I do agree with that. I mean, sometimes if you don't post, you're feeling like, oh my gosh, people will wonder where I am, what's going on, mm-hmm. and or else I'll wonder if they think I'm going to come back with some grand new announcement or something. <laughs> great. But you know, yeah. you're right. Most of the time, it's just taking stock and you know living in the real world and you know dealing with responsibilities and yeah but for the most part I do like to come back because it's fun making pretty things and yeah sure I mean that's the whole great thing about art (laughs) right it's it's, that's the best part about being an artist is that you're you're bringing joy into the world because you're creating but you know there's a there's a energy that it takes to do that too so um, we have to restore our energy also so definitely I don't want to be a machine <laughs> yeah so okay so you're working with artisan group and that's been ongoing for a long time you've been doing that with them for a while I have I want to say it's been I think I'm going into my sixth year now wow so I think that's about right six so years. do you have to like resubmit to be in this group or is once you're in, no, you're in? once you're in you're in um, and you can participate as much as you want. You don't mm-hmm. have to, you know, you really don't have to participate if your budget doesn't allow for you to do so. Mm-hmm. Um, you do what you can. And So have you actually ever, like, really ran the numbers of, like, okay, it took me so many dollars to make this many pieces, and then this person got in the magazine wearing it, and now I sold X amount of product because of that. Did, does Is it work? Do the numbers works work? quite well. All I can say is, for example, for the Vampire Diaries, um, I think I had four or five pieces that were selected by the stylist over the years. And the very first piece I sold was in 2013, and I still sell a few of those pieces every month. Oh, wow. And the show's not even on the air anymore. Yeah. So I, I feel very, very fortunate that 
that that definitely is true that when you come to think about what is the financial gain from something like that it's just ongoing right now mm. it's definitely I mean there's hits and misses but for the most yeah. part if you find something that is a good fit you know for your for your items hopefully the stylist sees that also yeah. and uh, you know get selected and yeah and then they ha- they get a relationship with you and they know what you what you can make and I hope so because I think you know like I said for the vampire diaries that was Picking more than one piece, I feel really, really honored. Do you think you could just go directly to these stylists in, in L.A. and just say, hey, I've got this line? And um, You probably could. I have not selected that avenue because I think I feel very comfortable in the path that I've selected through the Artisan Group because it's just so professionally run and mm-hmm. done so well that you don't have to go through that awkward period of, you know, contacting lots of stylists yeah. and this this way this works for me which could also be a waste of time could be a waste of time and it really could be one of many 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 as opposed to just part of a, a group that mm-hmm. submits so I feel mm-hmm. real fortunate I love that <laughs> I'm so happy to hear like this the evolution of everything from walking in my shop one day <laughs> well amen you can't too. see this she's shaking her head <laughs> It's been a good thing. I, I, I feel that you've always been there to, you know, to encourage me. And especially when we talk about the the times where it's, you know, be it creatively blocked or, or other responsibilities that come up. And yeah. you've always been there to support me. So I thank you for that. Oh, well, back at you. Same. <laughs> it's, not, it's really nice to have um, other creative friends because we work solo, so it's really nice to be able to have, and that's something I would really encourage people if you're a creative entrepreneur to um, meet up uh, you know, with other creative entrepreneurs and have coffee just to connect to the human world. Definitely. And, like your Dash Hound and my cats, like, <laughs> they can only take so much from us. That's right, my little dog knows everything that they need to know about gemstones. And- <laughs> And things of the, of that nature. So I, I agree with you. It's it is important to have your little network of people that you know you can bounce ideas off of or that you know support you because it's not always easy. It's not always easy to to be to be creative. And you would think it just come it flows all the time, but you know life gets in the way sometimes. Yeah, it, it's, we've just been through both of us situations and or just having you know your kids around that mm-hmm. you know you. My you priority have time. Part has yeah. always been the kids, but yeah. you know, you're in the middle of something that requires a, a time limit or something, and it's very hard to say, I'll get to you in a minute, when they are really my priority. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. It's a balance, and, and it's definitely a balance. And I think it's an extra little special nugget when you're a creative, too, because it's not like you just... Uh, go to a store and I'm a checker and I just check out things and that's what I do and everything. It's like, there's this whole process. It's a big process. Being, as as <laughs> from like, start to finish. Yeah, from... it's, like, it's like, you have to kind of, okay, get in the mindset. And like I said, it has to simmer a little bit. For me, it does. Like, it does I, for me too. I have lots of ideas always spinning mm-hmm. in my head and then there's a time when I'm like, now it's the time to put this down. So you don't spin out of control with them. <laughs> <laughs> like a whirling dervish. Yes. I, that could possibly be true too <laughs> it has this place maybe but not always <laughs> um so where do you think it's going with your with your jewelry line right now mm, are you I don't playing know. with new ideas oh, and... i have always playing with new ideas i took a class a metal smithing class um last year where i get to play with fire and and bend metal and and set stones and um i'm still believe it or not i mean i wanted to start it right away but you know life happens and things mm-hmm. occurred that I put it on hold a little bit but I just had the torch out yesterday kind of looking at it thinking do I really want to really want to plunge into this again and I do because I think you know we have to grow and learn mm-hmm. new skills and I don't know see where it takes me I think that's a really good um piece of advice too is that to educate yourself and to push yourself into trying other mediums and like I just did this I've been dying to pour resin on um, one of my canvases and that environs and it requires a torch <laughs> isn't it fun <laughs> um, okay look uh, me and fire bad idea me and hot glue guns bad idea me and staple guns bad me exactly ways, bad idea they I will be in the ER with my hand bandage so I had Bill do it 
So well, like, I resin with you with fire. So, so <laughs> well, you have to use the torch to um, kind of blow out the air bubbles. Oh. But of course, like I bought like the little baby torch, and he had like a torch. <laughs> <laughs> it, like seriously, almost caught the canvas so far. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty bad. I was like, oh gosh, this is, I don't know if this is for me. <laughs> Maybe it's for Bill. <laughs> but I'll tell you, I love the way that it came out. Well, Bill learned too. He's like, oh yeah, I got to pull that back. <laughs> like, I think there might be chemicals in here. This could go sideways really fast. So, Oh my goodness. Um, but yeah, but it was something I'd always wanted to do and I was really happy to actually get to try it. So I think as artists, we're always going to have to push ourselves to keep continuing to do different techniques and and stuff. I just know myself over the years, like fire, well, fire and yeah, staple see what's guns. A good fit. <laughs> yeah, see staple what's gunning a good your fit. finger to a canvas <laughs> is the time when you say, "Don't use one of those oh, again." I don't remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, my printer does. He was there teaching me how to staple gun um, canvas, wrap canvas onto um, the frame, and I shot it right through my nail. <laughs> yeah, uh, not a good thing. No. Your, your fingers bleed a lot. Let's just say. Mm. Um, okay, so. <laughs> So that was a tangent right there. Um, all right, I always like to like kind of wrap up with a couple of questions. And first question would be, what was the best advice ever given to you? Especially in terms of running a creative business. Um, I think it's really basic. It's just do what you love. You know, you can, mm -hmm. when you are creative, there's a lot of things that you can look at and say, oh, I can do that. Or, oh, I'd like to try that. But if you don't love it, your work's going to show it. Yeah, yeah. And staying focused too, like when there's a lot of a lot of things that you would like to do. Like I was just saying about the metal smithing, I really would like to get my hands on that. But there's other things that I've been working on that I, I want to complete. You mm -hmm. know, just yeah. complete that idea, close that chapter, and I don't want to just have my mind scattered all over the place because I think I think your work will show it ultimately. Yeah, I think so too. Do you ever feel like um, because of the I, sometimes I feel like there's so much pressure on social media to be posting all of the time. And it's like, I know I can do that really quick just to post that, but I really want to be working on this and this piece is going to take a while. So do you ever feel kind of pressure from Oh yeah, from I think, that? well, these days social media, I mean, if you don't have a good presence on social media, it can make or break you. <laughs> so yeah. I do feel, I feel that all the time, but yeah, I think there's just ways around it. You can have little sneak peeks of the process and... That's a good point. Yeah, it just doesn't have to be the final product and maybe the final product can just be your post that shows stuff in tatters that says, I was not happy with that product and I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. Okay, and then what would be your advice that you would give to somebody, like, when I when you walked in, I said, hey, could you make these? <laughs> and I'm like, what would be your advice, looking back now on your journey of 13 years, what would you say to that person back then? I would say, go for it and never look back. Because mm. if I had looked at the time at what was in front of me, uh, as far as, you know, all the things I needed to buy at the time and do I want to spend the money to do that or what if this stuff doesn't sell and if I doubted myself then it probably never would have gotten done so I took a leap of faith and I would tell anybody if you're thinking about doing something take the leap of faith it's really good for the soul yeah it's better to say you know well at least I tried at least I tried it <laughs> and uh see where it takes you what if right I had tried that right yeah. oh I love that <laughs> Oh, such a pleasure. I'm so happy that we finally got to do this. Me too, Maury. Thank you so much. This I'm is like honored. The, long, <laughs> the longest podcast day ever. It has been long, but it's always but, worth it. Yeah. It Spending was, time with it you. Was, it's great. Magical. And I can't wait to see more of what you create. And I'm hoping um, that we'll do a little follow-up on that too. Oh, I would love to. Thank you so much, Maury. Yay. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you like this podcast and you'd like to support it even more, you can join me over on patreon.com slash Mari Robeson and become a patron of mine. If you're a patron of mine, you'll receive bonus episodes every month only for patrons. You'll also receive 20% off all the merchandise in my online shop, mariropeson.bigcartel, and you will be receiving free printables every month that will be of my artwork and they're some really fun things. You can follow along on Instagram and you can see what I'm creating just for my patrons. I would deeply appreciate it. It would help me keep the lights on and it would help me pay all the fees that it takes to put together a podcast like this so that I can keep supporting all the artists, keep bringing you great information, keep paying it forward to the next generation of artists. 
It's just a wonderful thing, and I would really deeply appreciate your support.